What a beautiful way to start. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And as every Sunday, we have so much to rejoice and to be glad in that we get to have worship together in God's house. And so we're so glad to have everyone here. We also know that we have many who are watching on our online feed. So welcome to our Facebook Live friends who are joining us right now, as well as those that are watching the recordings on Facebook Live, YouTube, and on Epworth Channel 6. It was brought to my attention this morning that last Sunday's uh, service, we didn't have any audio. So I apologize for that, but I double-checked today, and we do. So you all are hearing us, and that's great. So uh, glad to have everyone here. And um, Carolyn had to, st <coughs> to step aside, so she asked Jan to fill in for us. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Jim. 
One more time, you gotta put up with me. Good morning, church, how are you? So, if you'll look at the back, you'll see that we're back here again next week. If you'll also look at Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the office is closed, and we will not have any regular meetings on Wednesday like we do before. However, we'll be back on the 26th, and don't forget that that Tuesday, we will have uh, the soup kitchen, and also we're decorating on the 29th at one o'clock. So if you can be here, please be here, because I don't want to be here by myself. Um, and on that happy note, does anybody have any joys? I do. I got to go to the four-year-old twins' birthday party yesterday. They were a riot. It was pretty funny. They kept going, present, present, present. <laughs> That's all they cared about. On that happy note, let's pass the peace. You have to ask him that.
everybody. Good morning. Let's stand and sing our first hymn together. Come, ye thankful people, come. It's page 718 in your hymn book, or it can be found on the screen. Will you join me in the call to worship? The day of the Lord is at hand. Be silent before our God. God brings judgment against oppressors, against all who misuse Earth's resources. The great day of God is near. It brings distress to those alienated from God. God breaks the weapons of war and strikes away the advantages of the uncomfortable. Will you pray with me? Father God, thank you so much for bringing us here today. Pour your spirit over us so that we can feel your presence this next week. Help us to be a thankful and enriched people so that we may be grateful to others and enrich their lives. We hope that we do everything for your good and we praise you because you do everything for our good. We pray in your son's holy name. Amen. You may be seated, and as you're being seated, I invite you to look in your bulletins. Hopefully you grabbed one as you came in. Uh, the list of our concerns, uh, we continue to pray for those that are battling uh, ongoing cancer uh, and uh, life-threatening illnesses. Uh, but also we uh, lift up those that are dealing with uh, current illnesses. Uh, we lift up a new one to our list at the bottom, uh, Charlie Ferguson. Many of the people in the town know Charlie. He's the uh, funeral director at Ferguson Funeral Home. Uh, he has been diagnosed with cancer and is undergoing his own chemo treatment. Um, so we're going to pray for him. Uh, we continue to pray for Gary uh, Bogus as he is dealing with cancer, as well as Judy Scarborough's niece, who's recovering from a heart attack. Uh, and, and oh, we're still continuing to pray for Pam, uh, Pam Walker as well. 
So uh, are there any other additions or uh, updates? Okay, seeing none. Uh, we know that those of you that are watching online, you have your own prayer concerns. Although we can't hear them, we know that our Lord and Savior can. So speak them out loud for wherever you are or within your hearts. But I invite everybody to let's now center ourselves as we go before our Lord in this time of prayer. Most amazing and beautiful God, we pause for just a moment on this busy day. In our busy lives, we take a deep breath and we feel your presence in our lives that is always there. But God, sometimes we forget. We forget to look your direction. We forget to remember that you had a promise that you will always be by our side. You will never leave us. And for that, we pause to give you thanks. We lift up those that are dealing with illnesses, the ups and downs of life, the curveballs that come our way. When we receive bad news, we turn to you. So God, hear our list. The ones that were printed, the ones that were spoken, and the ones that remain silent. Hear our prayers as we cry out to you, O oh God. For we know that your ears receive and your loving heart embraces every part of us. But God, we also know that life gives us joys and we pause to give celebrations for you and your involvement in our lives that you help us to find those moments. Because the, the world can be a loud place and so those joys can be hidden away. But by your teachings, we find them and we celebrate them and we dance with joy and know that you join us in the dance. Hear our joys as we lift them to you as well, God. For we know, God, that both in the concerns as well as the joys, there's a teachable moment of your love for this world. Help us, God, to share those lessons through our actions. For it is in and through the name of our Lord and Savior, the one who came and showed us how to love one another. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite our deacons at this time to make their way to the back of the sanctuary as we prepare to receive our offering this morning. Um, also, when you came in to get your bulletins, I hope you saw that there was a, a special offering for today. We have a flyer and a little envelope that it can go in. This is one of our quarterly offerings that we take up uh, as we call special offering. This one's the Thanksgiving offering uh, that goes toward uh, supporting higher education. Uh, and especially, I like to focus, if you notice, I'm wearing, I'm wearing my master's hood. Uh, I don't wear this very often, but I wear it on, on Higher Education Sunday uh, to kind of promote the fact that um, for many people, uh, if they decide to go into ministry, uh, they find out that in our denomination, they require a master's degree. Uh, in order to get into the master's degree program, you have to have a bachelor's degree. Uh, and none of that's cheap. You know, just to be honest with you, none of that's cheap. Uh, and so through the special offering, uh, there are scholarships that are made available. I'm proud to say that my alma mater, Phillips Theological Seminary, it was Phillips Graduate Seminary when I started, uh, they now offer seminary students an 80% uh, scholarship. 
So, uh, yeah, that is. That is. It's amazingly great. Um, so that way, if somebody really wants to go into ministry, uh, finances is not going to be in the way. Uh, and I know there are scholarships that are available uh, for our colleges uh, and universities as well. Um, uh, oftentimes, people forget TCU is one of ours. Uh, and we got some horn frogs over here <laughs> who graduated from there. So uh, Texas Christian University is a part of our denomination. Uh, as well as Eureka, uh, which is up in um, uh, Illinois, I think. Uh, I think that's where it is. And then there's also, oh, there's one in California. I just lost the name of it. Um, Phillips University uh, was one of ours until it went out of uh, business. But So uh, your offering also helps support scholarships for the undergraduate programs as well. Uh, our denomination, uh, our founders, uh, proud themselves on education. Uh, and that's important uh, for us and, uh, to keep that endeavor going. So uh, if you would consider in your special offering today to help uh, pave the way for others to have their continued education, uh, that is a blessing. So these things and others, uh, think of them as the plates are passed.
Indeed, God, we pause to give thanks because you've already blessed us. You've showered us abundantly with your love and provisions. And a portion of what you've already given to us, we give back now this morning. May it be united with all of your churches to make a difference in this world for your glory. In Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. Our scripture today, today comes from Matthew 25, 14 through 30. Would you please stand in honor of God's word? 
For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have been with, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <laughs> Often people say the Lord works in mysterious ways, and that is indeed true as well as, uh, as the computer technology, uh, because um, I prepared the slides up there, and, uh, and Darla did the bulletin with that scripture, and everything was on board, but the sermon I wrote has nothing to do with that scripture because as she was reading I was like wait a minute so I got my weeks all messed up so the good Lord wanted you to hear a message today and it wasn't that one so pack that one away um, and, and just know that that was a blessing uh, hearing uh, Jan preach on that <laughs> through the scripture but today I'm going to preach on Mark chapter 13 24 through 37 you see we're in that transitional period um, our liturgical year is coming to an end um, and next Sunday is Christ is King Sunday, uh, which is the last Sunday of the liturgical year that the Christian calendar resets on uh, Advent. And, and so there's, there's a little uh, discretionary in there which you can preach on. But uh, today I want to preach on Mark chapter 13, 24 through 37, uh, which has to deal with um, staying alert because you never know when the master is going to return. That's sort of the crux of that one. And, and it reminds me, though, uh, just a few years ago, uh, after during the pandemic, when the movie theater started to let people come back in and, and sit, Darla and I decided to go to a movie. And uh, we, had, we don't go to movies a whole lot anyway. Uh, but we had some uh, tickets to the movie theater that's in Penn Square Mall. And if you hadn't been in that theater or some of these others, it's so different than it used to be because they have these very comfortable chairs now. Um, they're lounge chairs and, and they're uh, powered and you can like set your legs out. I mean, these are comfy, comfy chairs. And so we watched this movie and the man next to me, uh, the movie hadn't been on very long, suddenly began to snore. <laughs> And I'm not talking like a little snore. I'm talking, man, he was fully into this. I mean, he was deep in sleep. And he would just, I was competing, trying to listen to the movie over him. And he had just gone to town. <clears throat> and when the movie was over, I thought, gosh, do I need to nudge him or something? But no, his wife took care of that. And in a not so nice voice, she said, well, boy, that was the most expensive nap you've ever taken. And 
But it reminds us, sometimes it is hard to stay awake. And our scripture for us today is Jesus' message that says, stay awake, for you do not know when the master is going to return. And it's hard to stay awake. I mean, there are times like if you're on a long road trip, and it's nighttime, and it begins to rain, a gentle rain, and it just kind of patters off of your windshield, and you watch the blades go back and forth, and you have visions of, of soft pillows and bed. Uh, when I drive long, I'm always thinking about where I'm going to be ahead of time, and I think that, that, that bed is just welcoming, and, and I start to kind of, oh, that's not safe. It's hard to stay awake. Um, when Lawson was being born a, a little over a year ago, um, we were there. We got there after midnight. Uh, that's Michael's bedtime. I mean, I'm usually well asleep by midnight. We got there to the hospital after midnight. Now, Darla got to go <clears throat> into the delivery room, so she was there with all the action. But the rest of us in the hallway were just sitting in chairs, you know, watching the other grandkids run around. I kept thinking, would it be bad if I crawled up on the floor, you know, and maybe took the seat cushion off of this chair or push a couple chairs together? I mean, it's hard to stay awake. Or, you know, whenever you call tech support and they put you on hold... And they play that soft, jazzy music, and you're just sitting there. And I'll confess there's times <clears throat> that I'm sitting there, all of a sudden here, sir, are you still there? I'm like, oh, uh, I dozed off waiting for them to come back. It's just hard. It's hard to stay awake. When you have long-winded pastors that just won't get to the point, you know, it's hard to stay awake. Our bodies were created that uh, we have to reset for eight hours a, a, a day to get our rest. And if we don't do it, guess what? Our bodies are going to do it for us. And they're just going to shut down and you're going to end up taking a nap. But Jesus said, stay awake. How do we do that? Our good news today from our master who leaves and tells a servant to stay awake and, and keep alert until I come back. And then the hours turn into days, the days to weeks, to months, to years, to decades. Next thing you know, it's over 2,000 years and we're still waiting. Jesus said, watch therefore. For you don't know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether at evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he might find you sleeping. What I tell you is to all watch and stay awake. Verses 34 and 37. It's almost unspoken, though, in our scripture, that if the master comes back, if our Lord and Savior comes back and finds us asleep, oh, we're in big trouble. But why? Why would God do that to us? I mean, why would God make birds to sing and then tell them to be quiet? Shh. Why would God cause flowers to blossom and then tell them, don't do it? Why would God create babies and tell them, don't be cute? It's just mean. How can God create us to sleep and then tell us, don't do it? Is God being mean? No. I think what it is, is we have a misunderstanding because we don't know the ancient words. So if we jet back in time to the ancient words, the ancient text, we realize that we're missing something here. In, in, in Mark, in his gospel, and throughout there, if you see phrases about being alert or being awake or staying awake, they are words they are telling us to be faithful. Be alert in your faithfulness. Don't be asleep in your faith. Being faithful means thinking beyond yourself and staying diligent to the work that you have to do as if it's just a part of who you are. There was a hotel clerk who was working at a desk and it was storming outside. The rain was just pouring down and this elderly couple tripped into the lobby and they were soaked to the bone. And they said, we just need a room for the night. We're on our journey and the rain caught us. And the clerk said, I am so sorry, but we are extremely full. We have no rooms left. But he looked at him and said, I can't send you nice people out into the storm. I can't send you back. Take my room. And they're like, no, 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 no. He said, no, 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 I insist. You take my room. And so he made them take his room. And I, I don't know this part of the story didn't say, but he probably just pulled up a chair and slept himself at the desk or in the lobby. But the next morning when the couple came back to the desk to pay their bill, they said, you know what? You are the kind of manager that should be managing a great hotel. I'm going to build you the best hotel in the United States has ever known. And you will manage it. And of course the clerk just smiled politely and said, oh, that's nice. A few years passed heard nothing from them. And suddenly a letter appeared in the mail. And the letter was addressed from that old elderly man who was there and recounted what that the clerk had done for him. And he said, 
I promised you, I have a surprise. And he said, um, enclosed is a round trip ticket to New York. I would like you to come visit. And the clerk did. He cashed in that, that uh, ticket and he flew to New York and his host met him at the airport and took him to the corner of Fifth Avenue and 34th Street there in New York where stood a magnificent, beautiful, brand new hotel. And he said, this is the hotel I built for you. I want you to be my manager. And of course, you may have figured this out. The elderly man's name was William Waldorf Astor. And he built the Waldorf Astoria. And that clerk, George Bolt, became the very first manager of the Waldorf Astoria. And George said in his comments about this was, I wasn't trying to find someone to build me a hotel. I was just being me. Isn't that powerful? He was just being himself, caring for others. Being faithful means being loyal. Even when thousands of years have passed and the second coming still hasn't come, we still expect it. Being faithful also means being diligent and steady. You know, we're just on this side of Thanksgiving, and I mentioned this kind of last week a little bit. There's a lot of preparation that's going to happen between now and, and next Thursday or whenever you're going to have your Thanksgiving dinner. Getting things together, uh, cleaning things out, putting out some decorations. Hopefully by tomorrow you'll put your turkey in the refrigerator to start thawing because as I warned you, it takes a couple of days to thaw out a turkey. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff that has to be in there. But just like our lesson last week of the ten bridesmaids and five of them are ready and five weren't, there are some things in life you just can't cram for. Staying awake for Jesus means you're not cramming. You're always ready. It's a part of who you are. It's like taking a breath or letting your heart beat. This is not a scripture to, to, to put fear into us that we're going to get caught not being ready. This is not a scripture to invoke images of life being unfun, that we can, we're not allowed to have fun because we always have to be diligent. No, life is a blast when you're ready. Why is it important for God to say that we need to stay awake, that we need to stay faithful, that we have to be ready? Because you never know when life's going to throw you a curveball. And if you're not ready for that curveball, it may just knock you right off of your feet. And it's not just bad things that send us uh, curveballs. They do. There's disappointments, frustrations. There's being threatened to undo everything that we love and know. We need strength during those times. Spiritual strength. Maturity. To deal with the good things in life as well. Whenever something great happens, if we're not ready for it as well, it can throw us off. It takes spiritual maturity to have your feet planted firmly in your faith by letting it be just who you are as you take a breath or let your heart beat. It takes spiritual maturity when financial disasters come our way, pandemics, all those things. But I would venture to say that for many people, they're undone just as much by success as they are by failures. Because they put their trust in the wrong places. So we have to be ready. We have to be diligent because guess what? Jesus is coming back. Jesus promised. And he's coming back. It may be a personal encounter you have with Jesus when it's your time to walk through the pearly gates. Or it could be when the world comes to end as we know it. Either way, Jesus is coming back. But the last thing we need to do is be afraid of that. Why would we be afraid of Jesus coming back? Only if we're not ready. So he says, stay awake. Because you don't know when it's going to be. But when it happens, it's going to be beautiful. I don't want you to miss it. So stay awake. Be faithful. Jesus isn't trying to catch us off guard. It's actually quite the opposite. We need to be ready so that when we happens, we can fully experience what Jesus has as a gift for us all. So let's dispel this idea that the second coming, that when Jesus returns, is something to be afraid of. It's something that we live for. It's something we prepare for. It's something we look forward to. I mean, yeah, some of these things makes us a little bit nervous. We're always nervous about the unknown or the first time. I remember the, the first date I went on, I was a nervous wreck while I was getting ready for that first date. You know, what if she doesn't show up? What if she doesn't want to do these things? What if, I didn't know what I was doing. I was a nervous wreck. When I found out I was going to be a dad for the first time, I was real 
really a nervous wreck. I read every book. I went to all these classes. I painted the room, getting ready for a baby to fill it. And I'm like, a baby, a, a new little life that's going to be dependent upon me is going to be in this room. I was scared eight years ago tomorrow when I walked into Darla's office with an engagement ring, ready to get down on one knee. What if she said no? <laughs> she didn't, by the way. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with getting nervous, but at the same time, we have to be ready. So Jesus says, stay awake. It's being faithful. It's being loyal. And it's not something that you can pull an all-nighter for. Staying awake means always being worky toward being ready. So you know what? A great way for us to pack all this together, one phrase I'm going to leave you with at the end of this sermon so that you can remember this. We are all called to live ready, not get ready. We're called to live ready, not get ready. Amen? Of course, one way to always live ready is to come to the communion table. But you know what? Life can get really busy. Um, I was just looking yesterday. Um, there was a lot going on in our little community yesterday. <clears throat> the community theater had their play going on, The Sound of Music, um, which is going on again this afternoon. A little plug in there for that. At 2.30? Two At 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock this afternoon. But they were doing it last night as well as they opened the park for the first time for the season for the Festival of Light. And at the same time, Altrusa had their Hall of Trees fundraiser. And now, um, because I represent the, uh, the soup kitchen that I was a part of getting started uh, and we were the beneficiary of it, uh, it was decided for me where I was going to be last night because uh, Altrusa was our th third and final year to be the recipient uh, of the funds from that fundraiser. So that's where Darla and I were last night. But at the same time, we were kind of pulled to go to all these different directions. Life can be busy. But you know what? Uh, it's just a lot like that video that Steve showed us last week with cutting the pieces of pie. You have to make it a priority because life gets busy. What better way to stay ready than to make sure you're at this table or ones like it around this globe, breaking bread, drinking cup, and fellowshipping with our Lord and Savior. What better way to tell God, I'm awake, than to come to the table for all are invited to partake. As we prepare to receive our Holy Communion, I'm going to turn it over to Crystal to lead us in our communion hymn. Let's sing hymn page 386, We Come as Guest Invited. <laughs>
On the night when our Lord and Savior was gathered with the disciples for that first last supper, he took the bread from the table, he lifted toward heaven to give thanks, but this time he took the bread and said, this is no longer ordinary bread, for this is my body that I give unto you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. In a like manner, he poured out some wine. And as he did, he said, this is no longer ordinary wine, for this is my life-giving blood that I pour out freely for you so that you can understand what true forgiveness is all about. So that we can be in a covenant, a covenant that's based on love. He said, drink of this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of the bread and we drink of the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, we honor your name, we give you thanks. We ask you this morning to bless this, these gifts that you've given to us. And we ask you to see us through the coming week and keep us free and keep us safe. These things we pray in your name. Our Father, we are a thankful people. This is a time of remembering so many things that we can be thankful for. We're thankful for our very lives, our freedom. We are thankful for our church. We're thankful for our families. But most of all at this time, help us to be thankful for you, dear God, for you gave yourself, you gave your body, you gave your blood so that we might have eternal life. Help us to remember your sacrifice as we partake of this cup. We ask this in your holy name, amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. <clears throat> God of wonder and of beauty who calls us to gather, <clears throat> you call us to come to the table, the table of remembrance and of fellowship. So we answer your invitation, but knowing that some of our church members are physically unable to join us. <clears throat> Bless our agape ministry as they extend the table of remembrance and fellowship to our homebound. So that way, God, they, as well as us, can break the bread and drink of the cup that we can remember and reflect on the saving acts of our Lord and Savior who came to live among us, who came to show us how to love one another and to find our way home. The least we could do is to offer back the prayer that he taught us so long ago. So as we blend our voices together, may your ears find it pleasing as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, as we forgive those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. What a wonderful morning it has been to be together and to worship together in God's house. Glad to have everyone here uh, that was here. Um, please come back again next week. Um, those of you that were watching online, we're glad that you joined us as well as the recordings later. Uh, that uh, We're glad that you tuned in as well. Uh, and I did take a peek to see some of those that are watching and some of those faces I haven't seen in a while. So glad to have you all watching as well. Um, now, don't forget next Sunday... Um, I'm going to be on vacation. Um, the Reverend Amy Rogers will be here preaching and doing all the parts that I normally do. So um, that doesn't mean you all can play hooky. That means you need to be here because she needs to have that support. So please be here. Um, and I'll probably be watching online as well to see how those uh, go. So uh, in preparation for that, uh, I've been trying to set some reminders and things. But also, um, I don't know if you all know, but um, usually I run the sound and the, and the PowerPoint when Shane's not here. Uh, and then, um, uh, so, uh, Aaron, uh, Guyton has been up there learning today. Yeah. You did good, girl. This was her first time, uh, to do all the PowerPoint stuff, and she started the Facebook Live, and I'll run up and show her how to end it as well, so that way, when I'm gone next week, we still have this, so thank you, Aaron, for that. Um, now, don't forget, board members, we have a board meeting immediately after worship over in the chapel, um, and so if you can make your way over there, uh, we can get started. Um, and it's an important meeting, so hopefully you all can stay for that. Um, as was mentioned, uh, no uh, Bible study, no choir. Um, the youth and I have been talking, and we may have youth group if enough of them aren't already busy doing some other stuff. But um, most likely it seemed like they're all busy as well. Uh, also, um, I know I say this almost every week, but we really are blessed with some talented musicians. And that forehand piece they played for the offertory was just, uh, that was beautiful. Very beautiful. Can you tell I like the forehand pieces? <laughs> I really do. Of course, your communion piece was beautiful as well. So uh, just great. Um, so we're, we're really blessed that way. So uh, now, as we leave from this place, uh, if, if First Christian Church is not your church home and you would like to be your church home, uh, by coming forward and confessing that Jesus is the Christ is the Son of the living God and proclaiming as your Lord and Savior uh, for the first time, then I'll be here to receive you. Or you can transfer your membership from another congregation. Those of you that are watching online, if you would like to make a First Christian your church home, just let me know in the messages and comments, and we can see if we can make that happen as well. But everybody can respond by singing as joyfully as we can our closing song. By the way, before we do that, I'd just like to say, um, yeah, last night at Altrusa, I got up there, and it, I've been here 18 years. It is great. It has just been wonderful. 
And if we were a person, we could vote. So there we go. So, uh, but no, I just wanted to say thank you all. Uh, to get up at Altrusa and represent the First Christian Church again, uh, it was just, it's just a blessing. So I invite you all to please stand. And as we sing our closing song, I'll turn it over to Crystal. Let's sing, uh, stand and sing together. Oh, four thousand tongues to sing. Verses, the first verse and the last verse. Yeah. I'll help out, do the bag for Conrad and all that stuff. Are you the good guy today? We don't know what that means. Are you counting money or are you taking a pump? Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, we're supposed to sign check. This has got, shall we open up this, I guess? This is a special offering. Let's just offer it to the same thing. Okay, so this is really for Thanksgiving. That's for Thanksgiving. That's for Thanksgiving. But we got cash 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 dollars worth of cash. And checks. Total it up. I just took it. Okay. The special offering we have is uh, $420. Oh, here's a free cane. Huh? That would be good. Hey, for hey, hey. Careful. I need that. <laughs> I need that for the weapon. <laughs> I don't know. No, there's not a check in there. Did you not bring it? 
Okay. That's what got you, Jack. I made sure I got it with him. Then you forgot what to do with it? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put. She goes up there. She goes up there. Okay. Thank you, Virginia.